Hey fam, Aaliyah here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where we will be doing another chit chat. Get ready with me. I will be chatting about a topic, doing my makeup, sipping on some drinkity drink. Today's drink of choice again is some tequila with some lime juice and some club soda, some sparkling water, some seltzer, if you will. I do want to name this series something other than chit chat. Get ready with me, okay? Because I'm kind of combining my wind down chit chat and glams all together in one but I wanted to have a little twang to a little twist you feel what I'm saying today I wanted to talk about what I learned being 24 I'm 25 years old right now I turned 25 back in December only like two months ago it wasn't that long ago and I never got to really share with you guys what I learned being 24 when I turned 24 I shared with you guys what I learned being 23 so, you know, I kind of want to continue, you know, that tradition, that tradition. Why can I never say tra the, sh the sh I can never say it. Like, I, sh I just can't. <laughs> I just want to continue the tradition. There we go, ma'am. The theme, the cycle of me sharing every year for my birthday, what I learned during that age. And then I just wanted to create a look using the Makeup Revolution Patricia Bright. She, I do it again. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my tongue, but it just doesn't want to say things with the C's, with the T's correctly. The Patricia, there we go, ma'am. The Makeup Revolution palette collab. I didn't know she had two palettes with them. She also has face palettes. I know this came out in 2019. But they sent me this like end of January, so I was like, might as well try it. They're colorful palettes, like, like, look at this. It's colorful. So is this one. She has two palettes. I'm only gonna use one of them today, though. So we gonna create a cohesive look with the wrap. Y'all know the drill. So without further kind, Jay, if you are interested in tuning into today's video, where I will be glamming my face with Patricia Bright. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Makeup Revolution palette collab and talking to you guys about what I learned at 24 years old of age going into being 25 today. Then subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. I am uploading every Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, 3 p.m. PST. I do premiere every single video now. So tune in, tap that bell so you get notified, honey. And stay tuned, keep on watching, and I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I low-key gotta hurry up. I'm the one cooking dinner for the family tonight. I'm also hopping on Instagram Live. Every Thursday on Instagram Live, I hop on there at 7 p.m. PST, drink some drinky drink, and then just chat with the girls. So if you are not following me on Instagram, man, what are you doing with your life? Get it together and follow me on Instagram, Aaliyah.Michelle. Y'all know the drill. Okay, let's get started with our makeity makeup. Uh, Patricia Bright palette, are, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my tongue. We're just gonna have to go with it. Both of them are colorful. I don't know which one I wanna use. Let me just show you guys both because they're popping and they're like heavy duty. Like, okay, Patricia, here is her Rich in Life palette. Ugh, look at that blue. I don't, l let me just look at both and just see which one I want to use. Ooh, this one, we're using this one. Okay, this is her Rich in Color palette with Makeup Revolution. Wow. Okay, we're gonna use this one. She also has face palettes, but I'll use those later. We're gonna start off with the eyes. Okay, anyways, I wrote my notes down. If I don't talk about a makeup product, check my description box. Down below, I list every single makeup product that I use. An affiliate link is attached to it, so if you wanna support my bag, <laughs> Go ahead and shop right through them things. I'm a little bit lower in the camera just so my mirror can be a little bit closer to me if you're wondering why I'm down here. Wow, I don't even know what look I wanna do. Oh, and these palettes fold all the way back and I got a fat ass mirror. Okay, Patricia. Okay, Makeup Revolution. Ooh, this orange is popping. Y'all need another look at this palette, ma'am. Look what is being delivered. Do you see this palette? Do you see this palette? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let me prime my lids. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer, the best concealer on the market, honey. Do not at me. Don't come for me. 
don't do me <laughs> so the first thing i learned like being 24 going into 25 is to not allow the highlight reels of social media to fool you you see people living their best life going on vacation posting designer always looking their best always having on the best outfit the best edited makeup look you have to realize that these are only highlight reels okay you do not know someone's life because of their instagram page their youtube channel whatever they post on you don't know people's lives not everyone is posting about their bad days i know people want people to post about their bad days but the internet is so insensitive and they never forget shit okay like you can just post you're having a bad day and because that one day you posted you're having a bad day people will always ask you about that bad day several years down the line it's really annoying how people operate on the internet because they just don't operate like that in real life like in real life honey people forgive you for your mistakes move on y'all are cool on the internet it's just not like that they will remember that shit until they die they will bring some internet shit to the grave with them but that's not even how they operate in real life so i don't really understand that part that vibe of the internet just know people are showing their highlight reels i never post when i'm having a bad day when i'm having a bad day when i don't feel good when i'm not just feeling it i'm feeling really down discouraged i am not even on the internet during that time i never post about it because once the feeling fades i just want it to be gone i don't need it to be remembered by the internet so just remember that i know people always want to claim that influencers make them insecure make them feel like they have to live this lavish lifestyle ma'am you follow celebrities Celebrities, okay this lavish lifestyle has always been around it's in magazines it's it's the rich the royalty okay they have been doing this I think the problem is people hate to see someone who's regular living a lavish lifestyle I think that makes them feel some type of way now that we're on the internet um, there are so many opportunities to make money and I think people are kind of mad they're projecting but they're just mad that they haven't figured out how to make that kind of money themselves so they you know they just blame influencers so never be jealous of someone else's life you don't want someone else's life i'm gonna use jacqueline hill's highlighter for my brow bone highlight you don't want someone else's life okay because you never know what someone is really going through you you don't like you don't know people on the internet like that you know their personality you know what they bring to the table as far as content delivery but you don't know them like that ma'am so that's what i learned because sometimes i'll be like wow how are they able to do that people be putting up a whole front now i'm not saying everyone puts up a front okay not everyone is fronting and flexing for the gram but i think flashy people who are always flashing what they got they may be fronting believe nothing of what you see and use your own mind use your own boy i'm not what the fuck am i doing see i'm talking i'm not even doing shit i'm supposed to be doing i'm using the wrong brush anyways the next thing i learned being 24 going into 25 is that like i'm really an adult adult now i just like learned that your brain finishes developing in your mid-20s so i'm 25 now so that's technically mid-20s so my brain like low-key just finished developing that's why i I never really agreed with people saying 21 is an adult 18 is an adult legally yes you are an adult legally you're an adult at 21 but I still think you are still a child at 18. You're kind of still a child at 21. People may disagree because you think you've grown. I know I went through that phase where when I was, once I hit 18, 19, I was like, girl, I'm grown. Can't nobody tell me nothing. But you're still developing. You're still very impressionable from 18 until damn 25. And that's an important part of your life to start um, instilling good habits into your life, to start teaching yourself to not stay ignorant, to unlearn what you knew growing up you know growing up sorry my grammar it's important to practice awareness at that age so you can not be stuck in your ways from 25 on because there are people who are in their mid early 20s who all this who want to be stuck in their ways you are far too young for that ma'am now that i learned that the brain doesn't finish developing developing until your mid 20s that, that kind of explains why men are immature like like i'm sorry off topic but that just kind of explains why men are high key immature for far too long like they don't really start to mature till like their 40s and even then they're still immature as hell like i don't really get maybe men's brains are different ma'am maybe they're just fucking different okay so yeah now i'm in adult adult and i be reading my financial books and um they say now when you're 25 to 35 this is the first quarter 
of your like financial year. So it's when you're really starting to, you know, make real money, um, pay real bills, experience real life. But like some people are just getting out of college and now they're in the real, real world, the real work world, okay? Where real money is involved, not just some petty $10 an hour money, some real, real money. So I'll cut someone who's younger than me now some slack on ignorance. But like, if you're far older than me, then I really feel like it's no excuse. Like, come on, unlearn that shit. I think before 25, you should, between 18 and 25, you should be trying to unlearn ignorance, unlearn, you know, what you thought was right when you were younger, but then you realized was wrong when you got older. Ooh, what should I do? I think I want to use this orange, like you just imagine. Should I go all the way bursts of color? Perhaps I should. Okay, I'm gonna use Yes Peaches. Ooh, that one, that orange is just calling my name. The next thing I learned is that yes, I'm an adult now, but I'm also still young. But sometimes that's conflicting with me. Like, you know how people say life is short and tomorrow isn't promised. That statement bothers me too because it's like, yeah, life is short, but what if you do live to 100? Like, yeah, life is short. Like, you could pass away tomorrow or you could live to 100. Like, that kind of is in my mind all the time. Like, I don't know, that's kind of conflicting. That idea of tomorrow isn't promised seems kind of scares me a little bit, so I try not to think of it that way anymore. Tomorrow may be guaranteed, so prepare for it. Like, I think life, now I'm just like, life is too short short to not live your best life. Life is too short to be scared. Life is too short to allow fear to hold you back, baby. Woo! Yes, Patricia. Yes, ma'am. Life is too short to not go for what you want. Life is too short to live for someone else. Life is too short to allow someone to run your life. Life is too short to hand over your power to another human being. Why do we do that? I do realize that we have we have so much control and power over our life, yet we hand over our power all the time. Like, why do we hand over our power? We hand over our power to the opinions of others. We allow the opinions of others to control how we view ourselves. Like, we just give other people too much power over our life when we have the most power over our life. Why do we care so much about what other people think? Why are we letting people's opinions run our life? Why are we allowing projection of other people to hold us back from going for what we really want. Now I just don't even really listen to people anymore. Like when people tell me not to do something, I'm like, ma'am, may perhaps you won't do it, but I will. Like you kind of, I think you have all of the answers within you. I think your intuition has all of the answers and if you listen to it, it will guide you. You just have to listen to it, be obedient. Everyone's intuition is different. I feel like everyone's life path is different, so. One person's life path may be one way, but your life path is a different way. So you have to listen to your inner self. You have to listen to the guidance within you. And that's what I believe now, and that's what I have learned going into 25. I know we're getting so deep and spiritual. All right, this color is beautiful, Patricia. You better go ahead and do the doggone thing, honey. Oh yeah, the next thing on my bullet that I already talked about was life is too short but also long like i said you literally may live to 100 what what if you do i feel like it's a little irresponsible or careless i'll say to just know death is gonna come and then do nothing with your life or leave no legacy behind death still scares me a little bit i think it's more so how you're going to die not necessarily death itself but like how people die like when people die tragically that scares me like that instills fear into me when people say tomorrow isn't promised, that kind of scares me because then I think about, oh no, what if I pass away tragically? Or what if someone close to me passes away tragically? Like, And because I feel like everyone kind of goes through something traumatic in their life, I'd be wondering, what's the traumatic thing I'm gonna go through? Am I gonna be ready for this? How is my life going to be after this? Will I be able to handle this? You know, I don't know, I just be thinking about it. It makes me sad, but I can't think about those things because I read a quote that said, worrying is praying for what you don't want, which is another manifestation kind of quote as well. Like you worry, you're fearful, but you're bringing what you don't want into your life and you don't even know it. And then you realize why all this shit is happening to you. And it's because you are bringing it into your life by always thinking about it, by always worrying about it, by always being fearful 
of it. The next thing I learned being 24 turning 25 is that I don't want to work my life away. Like I know America society really glorifies hard work, working hard, you know, breaking your back to get shit done, to not even make that much in return. I don't want to slave my life away. That just doesn't sound like an ideal life for me. Like I don't think the harder you work, the be the more blessings you'll receive. I think it's the smarter you work. And I think people need to teach other people about smart work instead of hard work. You know, you don't have to break your back for something. You don't have to slave. You don't have to spend most of your hours trying to make a check. And I was reading a finance book and. And it was like people spend so much of their life chasing money to still never even have enough. You know, they 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 spend their whole life chasing a check, chasing a bi-weekly paycheck to have to pay taxes to still not even have that much left over after bills. And then you just spend your whole life doing this. And if you were to just not work for one week, you wouldn't even make it. Like, I don't want my life to be like that. I think it's important now in your early, your early to mid, basically all your 20s, your whole 20, from 20 to 29, I think you should spend that working on um, learning financial intelligence and teaching yourself about finances, getting your finances together, making smart money moves so you don't have to slave your life away in your 50s and 60s and 70s like you could be chilling like i think 20s is a your whole 20s is cool to like slave your life oh i don't want to say it like that but just work extremely hard like learning all of this knowledge obtaining all this knowledge learning about money educating yourself on finances so when you are 30 and you are 40, like you're harvesting the fruit of your labor when you was 20, but also still live your best life at the same time, you know? We're gonna cut the crease all the way. I don't want 80 hours a week of my life to be making someone else financially well off, to not sow into me and sow into my finances and sow into my financial intelligence like i just want to be chilling i want that lavish comfortable lifestyle also i was like you know how people be like i want to build generational wealth i feel like people say that but then when they see people have generational wealth they hate it like they don't like seeing other people have generational wealth but then you you want to build it but then you hate to see people with it people do hate seeing people live a good life but i wish the people who are living that good life would just teach people how they got there like teach us have a course okay girl i will take that course i will go to your seminar like teach us how you got to that good life i think there should be more of that instead of making it this hush hush secret that only the rich know all right look how clean that is so beautiful i think i want to put pink the next thing I learned is that I now understand goal setting. I used, like, you know, um, the reason why goals don't work is because we're fantasizing about them, we're dreaming about them, but we're not really doing, taking the steps in order to reach that goal. So I now understand goal setting even more. Like, you can't just say you want to make a million dollars and think it's just going to happen. You have to want a million dollars to be the goal, and then you list the steps out that you need to take to get there. So that's what goal setting is to me now that's how i understand it like my head wrap line i wanted my head wrap line but i didn't quite know how i was going to make it happen so i just listed all of the steps out that i needed to take and i just started knocking off the easier things on the list like making a website getting the instagram name getting the twitter name all of those are pretty easy to do because i know how to do that and then i was like okay now i have to figure out how to find the head wrap so i took the time out to do that like instead of making it an overwhelming goal you have the goal and then you list the steps out needed to get to that goal and then you just start knocking the stuff off the list oh this pink looks popping yes yes patricia ma'am you need an award for this palette. You know, I'm really surprised she came out with this kind of palette because you don't really know Patricia for makeup. Like, Patricia does like, she does like, what would you call her content? Like, I feel like she talks about finances, she talks about real estate, she talks about real shit, she tries on clothes, you know, and she buys stuff from like different sites to like try. I don't know what kind of influencer, uh, it's like on the top of my head, but I can't really think. Would you call that lifestyle? I think just simply put, she's more of a lifestyle influencer, so. When I seen that this was the palette she came out with, I was like, baby, what took y'all so long to send it to me? Okay. <laughs> so you have to make goal setting more realistic so it can be real to you. No matter what your goal is, if your goal is to wake up early, list the steps out that needs that you need to do in order to make that achievable. 
Like, don't just do shit cold turkey. Because I feel like a habit never really sticks when you do it cold turkey. I feel like you have to build your way up to a habit. Like, just think of the habit you got right now. Why do you do the things you do? Because you've done it for a long time. So now it's habitual. Now it's in your routine. Now you kind of on auto autopilot when you do the things that you do today. So you just have to make this, take the steps to integrate it in, into part of your life. That is the power and the secret to manifestation. You can't just want things. You can't just dream about things. You can't just fantasize about things. Know what you want, list out what you want, list the doable, achievable steps needed to take to get to where you wanna go, okay? I kinda just wing looks, y'all. Some people be like, how do you think of this shit? Bitch, I just wing it. Or I just kinda follow my head wrap. People are so wrapped up in other people clapping for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know the saying, watch out for those who aren't clapping. You really, you know, people are worried about them. They're worried about their life i feel like your achievements and your accomplishments are not anyone else's worry but you like i feel like you want people what am i trying to say people is worried about them and what they got going on like i know it feels good to see people clap for you and be happy for you but why are we doing things for other people's cheer for other people's excitement like worry about the people who are present and supporting you now why are you worried about the people who aren't clapping who aren't supporting like their life doesn't revolve around you that's what i'm trying to say like their life doesn't revolve around the good things happening for you your accomplishments your achievements your leveling up their life doesn't revolve around you okay they're worried about them they're worried about what they got going on they're stressed out about their life you know they're trying to get their life together and off the ground we want ourselves to be super important in other people's lives but girl people is just worried about them okay like don't take that so personal but you know i'm not talking about like your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your partner or like your bff your best friend but even still they still have their own life and their own worries and their own stresses we are all existing in our own worlds there are seven billion worlds on this world okay everyone is in their own world worry about you boo and stay true to you oh fuck i picked up the wrong color oh my gosh Oh my gosh. See, it's hard to make matte yellows. This matte yellow is not really it. I'm gonna take this, ooh, this shimmery yellow. I'm gonna use this one instead. It is not easy trying to do a creative look while you're talking. Oh, I'm almost damn done with my list. Let me slow down a little bit. Anyways, the next thing on my list is to take care of yourself now. Take care of your mental health now. Take care of your physical health now. Take care of you now. Practice self-care. Have a self-care routine. You want you want to set yourself up for your older self. Like you don't want to just leave it hanging to the last minute and then oh shoot. I should have cared about me back then because now I'm facing the consequences of what I didn't do back then, you know? I think now is the time to really take care of yourself because I feel like you are far too young to be set in your ways in your 20s. Then I learned that you still don't know shit. Like, you still don't know shit. You don't know a doggone thing. Like, you think you know everything. I feel like at every age, even from like 13 when you hit puberty and on, you be thinking you know everything. And then it's like, wow, when I was 13, I really thought... I I was that bitch the fuck was my 13 year old ass thinking i don't even remember being 13. i don't remember a lot of my teenage years i don't even remember being not playing i remember being 16. i remember like my high school age but like 13 like i could I, there's not a photo of, in my mind of me at 13. okay this is a better shape you see what you see what's going on right here also if you're older than me like you're one of my older viewers or we're the same age or slightly younger comment down below what you have learned at your age okay what revelation has come to you from aging getting older having birthdays you know just reflecting on the year reflecting on your age let me know what you learned down below as well okay let me create some liner there's just far too much to learn don't be set in your ways i think when you think you know everything you become arrogant and then you stop learning i read that somewhere i don't know where where i read it maybe it was a quote but yeah it said you become arrogant when you stop learning because you think you know everything it's okay to be wrong but i just hate now on the internet you can't be wrong like people will just crucify you if you're wrong like it's kind of really annoying because again i feel like people are not like this in real life like in real life you could be wrong and then people just laugh about it but no on the internet ma'am man i should have did blue what was i 
thinking? Hold on, let's mix this in with blue. Let's mix this in with blue. Do like a little blue purple. Oh, it's bright over here. It's just because I put it over top of that purple. I love using shadow as liner. Okay, okay, we may be. We may be doing something, okay? We may be getting somewhere. I'm talking about innocently wrong. Like, like no one knows everything. Like, no one knows everything. I don't know what this arrogance is about. About people acting like they just know everything. They just have learned everything. They are a walking encyclopedia, honey. Ain't nobody a walking encyclopedia, ma'am. Let me go do my other eye, and then I have one more point. Clean this up. I'm just using a little bit of micellar cleansing water. I see you, girl. All right, y'all, this looks pretty popping. I just added a little bit of this Fenty Beauty liner. This is in the shade Banana Blaze, just in the crease. I couldn't even show y'all, even if I did, because I gotta get real up close to the mirror. Okay, let's hurry up, let's finish, let's do this face the favorite part of my makeup routine this looks really good okay bitch i'm low-key talented all right i'm using this smashbox photo finish oil and shine primer i've actually been liking this primer lately because y'all know how i set my primer with powder i don't even have to do it with this primer so i've been liking this i only take a little bit i put it in the same place that i always prime but I don't set this primer because, you know, I just wanted to test the primer out, right? Just to see what she be doing. And, girl, I don't even need to set it with powder. Like, okay, smash box. But go ahead and do the damn thing, honey. All right, I only have one more point for what I learned in 24 turning 25. And it's that it's far too early to settle. To settle for anything. Like, we are so young. We are too young to be settling, ma'am. I feel like we place glass ceilings on our life unknowingly. I, I don't know why we do it. I feel like people think because they chose a choice, they're stuck in that choice. Like they chose, they chose a career or a job and they're stuck in that job. Like they have to keep it forever. They have to retire that job at 60 and they can't switch career paths. You are far too young to settle. You, you, you're not married to a choice. I think, I think our brain just kind of puts a glass ceiling. Our brain makes us think that because we stuck in a choice or we chose a choice that we're stuck to that choice and we have to live with that choice honestly people make you think that too it's like oh you can't turn back now once you choose this way you can't go another way and i don't really think that's true i think you can switch directions you can switch directions in careers like if you're in college and you chose a major and then you just found out after you graduated that girl you don't fucking like biology and you want to do art you can do art like yeah it may feel like damn that was a waste of four years for me to just not even fuck with biology like that no more but you can make that choice you're not married to a biology career if girl if you want to do art for a living then do art for a living i'm just using that as an example we're not married to choices you can cho you can change your path and that goes back to having the power over your life to do what you want to do ma'am we're not married to anything. And I think because of marriage, people get comfortable and they don't even want to better themselves as a person for their spouse. So they just stay in their same way. And their spouse don't like them no damn more. And they not even trying to make shit spicy. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, make it spicy. Don't ever get too comfortable, not even with your partner, okay? We're always work on becoming the entire best version of your dog on self so you can be a better version to other people we have to show up for ourselves so we can show up for other people so we can have good energy for other people so people can enjoy being in our presence the Too Faced foundation whoa i think the two two face really did they doggone thing with the born this way line yes they did like it's just so good it's their best best selling i i'm sure it is their best selling line but it truly is immaculate stupendous superb i'm glad this eye look came out like this like bitch i can't wait to take pictures but those are what i learned i just kind of sat down reflected on being 24 and i feel like you really do get better with age that's my goal to always become a better person a better version of myself to be the best me i can be and i kind of i love the woman i'm becoming when i was like early teenage i'll say teenage years to early 20s early early like 21 22 I think it stopped at 22. I didn't really like who I was. I th I've touched on this before. I didn't really like who I was. I was just not confident in me because as I said in the previous get ready with me, people had made me feel like something is wrong with me. So because of that, I was just kind of angry. Like I don't really express anger 
outwardly I kind of internalize it and suppress it and bottle it up but I was just a super angry I was very abrasive person I wasn't a nice person to like people around me like family like I was just kind of mean but not because I didn't like you just because I didn't like my fucking self like hurt people hurt people but I don't think people do it intentionally they just angry with they damn self. That's why now I just don't really take that personally. When people are just angry on the internet, they just don't like them. They're insecure with themselves in their life, so they just kind of lash out. They probably don't even realize that that's what they're doing because then, like in my teenage years and then early, early 20s, I didn't realize I was doing that either until I had to really think about it and I was like, you know what? I really was freaking doing that. And people told me like, yeah, Aaliyah, you were me. You weren't a good version of yourself. And then I know why now. Then I didn't really understand. I didn't really, I wasn't like aware that that's how I was coming off, you know? That's why now, because of me experiencing that with myself, I don't take it personally when people are mean or just lashing out or just i don't take it personally anymore because i see me in them see no one's perfect and everyone has grown from a place everyone has corrected a mistake and then they forget that they were once that so they judge other people i heard a whole sermon on this i think it was a michael todd sermon he was like yeah you grow from your mistakes but then when you see people making your same mistakes that you made a while back you judge them when that was once you like why 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 are you doing that that was literally once you what, what a few years back or something and then look you see a person kind of being the same way you were back then and you're judging them for it and you're kind of being judgmental and hateful and like ooh, that could never be me when it was once you you know so i've learned to be even more understanding i'm even more understanding now like i'm just like you know what it's cool i ain't even gonna take offense to that because you probably not even a, even in a good place in your life and that's probably why you talking the way you're talking or just vibrating the way you're vibrating like now i'm all about frequency and vibrational frequencies and i was vibrating very low then i'm vib vibrating higher i'm aware of my energy aware of how i'm coming off so when people are coming off very low they're vibrating lower I can kind of feel it and I don't really want to be around it because I wouldn't I wouldn't have wanted to be around me back then during my low vibrational frequency ways and I think it's a little unfair to other people to expect them to want to deal with you when you're like angry with yourself and lashing out and just being over overall mean and abrasive and you know, an asshole, a bitch, you know. I think it's unfair to people to expect them to just tolerate the worst version of you. Oh, we can get into something else. Like, I feel like we probably don't realize it, but you know when you're talking to maybe a stranger, you kind of give them a, a better version of yourself so you don't come off rude or whatever. But I feel like we get too comfortable with the people in our everyday lives that we don't consciously give them the best version of ourselves. They get our attitudes, they get our irritation, they get our anger, you know, they get our frustration, they see us on our bad days, and we're not consciously trying to give them the better version of ourselves. And I think the people in our everyday lives, like your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, your best friend, I think they deserve the best version of ourselves. But sometimes we get way too comfortable and we're always giving them our attitudes or our frustrations, our irritations, our bad days. Like they see us on our worst days. They see us when we're not the best version of ourselves, when we're assholes, you know what I'm saying? And we just expect them to tolerate that. I think we should be more aware and conscious to give those people, the most important people in our lives, the better version of ourselves, the way we give it to strangers. Like why we give the best version of ourselves to strangers automatically. Like strangers just automatically deserve your best version, honey, okay? They deserve your smile, they deserve your radiance, you just give it to them. Because we're just afraid of, you know, first impressions not being the best. So we just do that. But I think we should work on giving like our boyfriends, our girlfriends, our best friends, you know, those people, the best version of ourselves. Like me, I like to deal with my anger or I don't, I'm not really an angry person though. I just, I'm not outwardly angry. But like my irritation, I like to deal with that in my solitude, in my alone time, so I'm not giving that energy off to other people. Cause yes, I still get angry, I get irritated, I get frustrated, I be having bad days, I don't wanna talk to nobody. People are annoying to me and I can, it can come off as me being a complete asshole. And I think it's just unfair 
for the person on the receiving end of that to receive that from me, you know? So I just make an effort now to be present. Like when me and my boyfriend have dates on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, I make it an effort to be a, a present. I make it an effort to be, you know, there, you know, not on my phone. Well, sometimes we be on our phones, but I make a conscious decision to be intentional with the time that we spend together. They don't deserve my long, tired ass day attitude. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if I had a bad day, okay, you didn't know that. So let me just throw that bad day away, you know, for a second and show up for you, okay? Like, we both had a long day. Let's just enjoy this time at the bar or this time eating good food and give each other the best version of ourselves. So yeah, y'all, that's what I done learned. I know that came off so preachy. I could get real deep, okay? I enjoy like wisdom, like wisdom in quotes are like my jam, they're like my kink. <laughs> um, I love learning from other people, other women who are older than me. Not all the time, cause some people are just, like they had a bad experience and then they just wanna warn you about their bad experience. I think that's pretty annoying. Cause not everyone is gonna have your same experience. Is that blue? Doggone it, I gotta get this blue off of here. Whatever, it's just gonna have to be there. It's already stuck to the concealer. All right, that, those were all my points. Let me just speed through this makeup cause I don't really think I got anything else to say. I'm not a woman of many words, believe it or not. These chit chat get ready with me's are the most I ever talk like all day, all week girl, all month. I don't be talking that much. Like during the day, I'm, I mainly just keep to myself and I talk to myself in my head. There's this thing on Twitter going around that not everyone has an inner monologue. Like I have a very audible voice inside of my head. Like I can hear myself talk inside of my head, but not everyone has that. And that's so interesting. Like, you know, you think everyone just has it. Everyone just has an audible inner monologue, but some people don't. So if you don't, audibly hear your voice inside of your head as you're thinking to yourself comment it down below i want to know and if you do comment it down below as well let's see how many people cannot talk to themselves in their mind like that's crazy like you be thinking everyone can do it but they can't like people just don't hear their voice inside of their head like while while they're thinking so then if you can't then how do you think like what are your thoughts like this is a great palette i'm gonna have to use this again and there's also another palette like wow patricia i'm maybe three months four months late but ma'am i'm here and i'm awake and i'm here i'm woke i'm wokeeth I woke up. Press, press, press it in. Press, press, press it in. Press that setting powder in. Press that setting powder in. Press, press, press it in. Did y'all know I used to be a cheerleader? I bet y'all didn't even know that. I used to cheer in high school and I did competitive cheerleading. Fun fact about me today, press that setting powder in. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> press it in, press it in. Let it all mad out. I can make a song out of anything. Y'all ain't seeing me in karaoke. No, you're not. <laughs> Get out, leave right now. It's the end of you and me. Bitch, where JoJo at? Get out, please. She was serving us bobs when she was a child. And she had vocals, honey. My eyeshadow is popping. What should I put on the lower lash line? I think I should put red. Too Faced came out with these complexion enhancing palettes. It's literally like MAC mineralized skin finish. I used it the other day and my face was so snatched. It gives such a glow from within. It's not much color payoff, but I just kind of use it just to enhance my bronze tour just a little bit. And I was like, bitch, my face is sitting. They have four. I'm using tan right now. But it's not really for contour. It's just like to dust over your whole face. I'm just using it to enhance my bronzer a little bit because I don't want to add too much. And the soft focus effect that it gave, I don't know if these are out yet. Because I tried to link them the other day because I used it in an IGTV and I couldn't find it. So I don't think it's out yet. It may be out. I don't know. If it is, it'll be linked down below, of course. It just, it's so beautiful. Like, this is what the girls need. A glow from within. I know my lips is crusty. Okay, don't come for me. It's so pretty. Too Faced, yes. Like this, okay, this is a product. I know this shit gonna do well. It just completes the cheek, honey. It just snatches the cheek up. Oh my gosh. I'm putting the red glitter right on top. Ooh, this face, honey, it is snatched. Let's do a lip and then I'll just pop on my lashes off camera. I think I will add bottom lashes, but if I do, I'll let you know which ones they are. Don't you fret. I'm going to apply this smash 
Smashbox Always On Cream to Matte Lipstick. It is so pigmented, you guys. These are so pigmented and they just apply like a dream. They also dry down super quick and they just literally lock in place. This shade is Stepping Out. More of like a muted mauve. I love muted mauves. Cause it's like your lip color but better. Yes, they just glide on. It just glides on. And it like hugs the shape of your lip. Like, ugh, that color. But we're gonna top it off with some gloss. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know how I do. I'm going to apply this Pat McGrath Opulous Gloss. This one is in the shade Venomistress. Yes, yes, the drama. It is so pigmented. Mm hmm. She glides on like a dream, too, honey. Delectable, divine, sublime. All right, so I went ahead and popped on these Celeste Los Angeles Fly Girl lashes and the bottom lashes. And the bottom lashes are these Ardell pre cut lashes, which I think are perfect to pop on on the lower lash line. Oh, I really like how this look came out. It is so cohesive with the head wrap like the head wrap inspires me honey it guides me so i hope you guys enjoy this little chit chat get ready with me drankity drank boom i'm finished of me discussing what i learned being 24 going into 25 if you did be sure to give this video a thumbs up but if you are new here and this is the first time being on my channel and seeing my face I would love to see you in the next one. Subscribe to my channel and join me and the honeys, honey. And until next time, always remember to serve, honey. And I'll see y'all in my next upload. Bye.